When you have an Etsy shop, keeping an eye on your Etsy stats is really important, obviously, to understand how things are going, what's working, what's not working, and how you can improve your results. Inside your Etsy shop manager, Etsy gives you access to a dashboard called the shop stats that will help you do just that, which is great, except although the shop stats pages are easy to navigate and they do give you a fair bit of data, it's not always super easy to make sense of that data or of what it all really means so that you can actually do something with it and improve your shop thanks to it. It's even possible that when you first take a deep dive into your shop stats, you find yourself thinking, holy cow, Deb, what do all these numbers and graphs mean? And what am I meant to do with this information? So in today's video, I'm going to walk you through these Etsy shop stats pages and explain what each term means and how it can help you assess how your handmade business and your listings are performing. And just for fun, I've got a little quiz for you at the end so you can test yourself on your new Etsy stats knowledge. Ready? Let's dive in. Bonjour, my name is Deb and I'm the founder of Tizit Deco, a membership community for makers and handmade shop owners, just like your fabulous self. You can learn more about our community, Tizit HQ, via the link below this video. But for now, let's jump straight into today's conversation, understanding your Etsy shop stats. So first off, let's have a look at your shop stats. Inside your shop manager, you will find on the menu on the left, your shop stats. From there, you can select the timeline that you want to take a look at up the top. And then the first four things that you will see are visits, orders, conversion rate, and revenue. And if you click on each, you will see a graph that shows the data for that one. So let's go through and define each of these terms. Visits is essentially how many people actually found your shop and visited your shop. So how many people looked at your shop or at your listings. After visits is orders, which will be the total number of orders your shop has received. So it's not the number of items that you sold, but the number of orders that you received. So for example, you might have sold 50 products, but only over 35 orders because some orders were made of several products. So this is just looking at how many orders you had, not how many products you sold. Next is conversion rate, which tells you what percentage of your shop visitors ended up ordering something. So it takes the numbers of order you receive and divides it by the number of visits. This is a very important metric because it helps you understand if people who come to your shop and visit your shop end up wanting to purchase. If it's too low, you know you need to look at your listings to see why they might not be purchasing. And you're going to check things like pricing, titles, product descriptions, photos, all that good stuff. Your conversion rate is also important to signal to Etsy that, hey Etsy, people are buying my products. You should maybe show them more in search results and a higher conversion rate can do wonders for your SEO strategy and to get shown even more on the search results pages. And finally, we have revenue, which is the total amount of money you've collected from your sales after subtracting any postage or tax cost. Now, before we dive deeper, I want to take a minute to cover something really important, which is the big difference between views and visits. I see a lot of Etsy sellers, especially when you first get started, that get these two terms confused. So I want to help you clarify what each one means. They are both important. They just tell you different things. So put simply, a visit means a person, one human being that came to your shop. So if you have 250 visits, you know that 250 different people visited your shop over that time period. Views are different. The number of views is more an indicator of if those visitors stayed in your shop and wanted to click on more listings, not just the one they initially came to see. So it tells you how many times your listings have been seen. So your views can tell you which ones of your products attract more eyes if you want. And it also tells you if someone who visits your shop stays to look at other products in your shop. So for example, if you have five visits, but 20 views, you know that on average, every person has looked at four listings in your shop. So having 20 views doesn't mean 20 different people have found and visited your shop, but that your listings have been seen 20 times by one or multiple different people. Now let's talk about views versus visits for conversion rate calculation. This difference is also important to understand when looking at your conversion rate. Your conversion rate is based on visits, not on views. So let me quickly explain why. Let's say you get a thousand views to your shop. Remember that a thousand views does not necessarily mean a thousand different people although that would be really, really nice. <laughs> it's more likely that maybe 500 or 600 people clicked around your shop and each of those visitors clicked on multiple listings. So if you use views to do your 
your calculation for your conversion rate, your conversion rate would be around 1%. But if you use visits, meaning actual visitors or unique visits, then your conversion rate will be around 3%. I actually have a video all about conversion rates where I explain this in more detail and teach you how to easily calculate your product conversion rates and make sense of them. I will include the link to that video down below so you can watch it after this one. Now, because views and visits mean completely different things, you can actually use both of them in what's called your views to visits ratio, which is a really helpful piece of information because it tells you on average how many listings people look at when they visit your shop. So from our previous example, the ratio would be 20 views divided by five visits, which is four, and that's on average how many listings people looked at in your shop. Okay, now back to that stats dashboard. The next thing you'll find in your shop stats is how shoppers found you. If you scroll down, you will see that it's divided into two sections. How Etsy helps you bring visitors to your shop and how you actually brought visitors to your shop. Now, as you hear about the different categories within each of these two sections, I know it can get a bit confusing and quirky and you might think some of the categories aren't how you would logically classify your visits. And to be honest, if you were to ask me if I thought it could be done better, I would probably say, yeah, sure. <laughs> and I do hope that eventually this video will be obsolete because Etsy will have improved these categories and the way they display this information. But at the moment, it's just how it is. So even though it may seem like an odd way to categorize the data in your shop, as long as you keep the definitions of these terms that we're going to go through in mind, then when you look at your data, you will know what this data actually means and you'll be totally fine. So, uh, all right, now that we have that out of the way, let's talk about the first column, the visits that Etsy helped you get. The first category in the section is Etsy search, which tells you how many visitors found your shop after doing a search on Etsy. It's important to note though that this term doesn't include people who found your shop when doing a search on the Etsy app, nor does it include people who clicked an ad that showed up in the results list in the Etsy search. Instead, those are found in the next metric, Etsy app and other Etsy pages. This includes visits from people who are browsing the Etsy app or browsing pages on Etsy.com. App pages include visits to your listing or shop from any page in the app, searching Etsy on the app, Etsy ads clicked on the app, etc. So basically anyone finding their way to your shop or listings while using the app. Etsy pages can include visitors that found you through category pages, editors, pics pages, the Etsy community forums, and any other internal Etsy page. Next, let's talk about the Etsy marketing and SEO metric. This is essentially Etsy doing marketing for you outside of Etsy. So this can be traffic that you get from offsite Etsy ads on Google and Bing, so paid traffic from outside of Etsy, or from your listings being found on Google and Bing and other search engines organically, so organic search traffic from outside of Etsy. Okay, that wraps up the different categories in the visitors that Etsy brought to your shop section. So now let's talk about the next section, the other one, visits you brought yourself. And so visits that you bring yourself can happen in different ways. The first is direct and other traffic. Direct traffic consists of visitors who typed your shop URL right into their browser or clicked a link that took them directly to your shop. Perhaps it was in an email, in a message, in a blog, on someone else's website, things like that. Next is Etsy ads, which consists of any visit you get from an ad that someone clicked on in the search results list in Etsy, so paid traffic on Etsy. Remember though that this does not include visits from clicking on an Etsy ad in the Etsy app though. Those clicks are recorded in the Etsy app and other Etsy pages section, or visits from clicking on offsite ads. Social media is thankfully pretty straightforward. It includes visits where someone clicked a link to your shop from any social media website, Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and all of those. Any click from social media accounts here, whether it's from your own personal account or a link that someone shared on social media or a link from an offsite ad on social media. So that covers the shop stats for visitors that come to your shop. Your head might be spinning a little bit at this point. I know the categories are not super intuitive. It's strange to have a category called Etsy marketing and SEO that doesn't actually include Etsy SEO or Etsy search, as that's what we you know, naturally think of. But once you get the hang of it, it becomes second nature and you'll just know where is what without having to think about it. And actually, let's do a fun little quiz together to test your knowledge, but also mostly because quiz are like super fun. <laughs> and I just felt like doing one. So I'm going to ask five questions. Try to guess the answer and let me know in the comments below how many you got right. No judgments, this is really just for fun. 
One, if someone uses the Etsy app on say their phone, searching for a keyword and finds one of your listing through that, where on the Etsy stats page will it show up? It would show up in the Etsy app and other Etsy pages section. Two, if someone clicks on one of your product listings from Google after searching for a product there, where will this visit show up in the Etsy stats? in Etsy marketing and SEO. Three, if someone uses the website etsy.com search field, so the search bar at the top of the Etsy website and finds your listing through that after searching for a few keywords, where will it show up on the Etsy stats page? In Etsy search. <laughs> Four, if someone clicked on an Etsy promoted listing, so an Etsy ad on the Etsy website to get to your listing, where will it show up? in Etsy ads. And finally five, if someone clicks an Etsy ad while on the Etsy mobile app, where will it show up on the Etsy stats page? In Etsy app and other Etsy pages. Okay, I'm having a little too much fun here, so I'll stop there because I want to share a few more things with you, but do let me know below how many you got right in the comments. And now let's talk a bit about the next section of your dashboard, offsite ads. Offsite ads are pretty straightforward. We're not going to dive too deep into this, but essentially these are ads on offsite web pages like Google, Etsy publishing partners, social media ad that Etsy runs for you and you only pay a fee if you make a sale from it. These offsite ads are required by Etsy as in you have to participate if you have made above 10,000 US dollars over the last year, or you can opt in on a voluntary basis if you haven't reached that income level yet. So if you do those ads, you could click here to get a breakdown of the visits that came from those ads. Now let's move on to how your listings performed. This section lets you compare stats of your product listings. You will see a list of all of your individual listings and for each one, it will tell you uh, views and then uh, orders <laughs> and then favorites and then revenue. And so you can order those columns, like you can sort on each column and see which listings are performing best for each of those categories. It's a great way to compare your individual listings all in one place. And this gives you a really nice overview of which listings are performing better in terms of views, revenue, etc. Now in that table, when you click on a listing, it loads a more detailed stats page just for that specific listing. And the first thing you will see on the product details page are visits, items sold and revenue for this particular product. So far, so good. Down below, you'll then see a section called explore your data, where you can explore all of your data by essentially combining any of these four metrics. So for example, you can compare total views to orders, visits to orders or revenue to views or any other combination you prefer. When you do this, you'll see a graph with two curves showing and comparing that data. You can use this to figure out things like how many views result in an order. So looking at your conversion rate based on views, how many visits result in an order. So your conversion rate based on visits, what is the ratio of views to visits? This will tell you if visitors click on many additional listings while in your shop. Are peaks in views or visits always correlated to more orders and revenue. So this is a great indicator, for example, of traffic quality. It will allow you to see if peaks in views or peaks in visits over time seem to correlate to more orders and revenue or not. Sometimes you may see a big peak in views for a specific listing that didn't necessarily convert to as many orders as you thought it would. And that's a good starting point to investigate the traffic quality. So why did you get a lot of views suddenly, but then they didn't convert? Is it because you changed keywords and maybe they were less targeted? Or is it because you ran an ad campaign from, for example, Instagram, and it didn't send the right type of customers to that listing, so that didn't convert into sales? So this is really valuable information. Or did the opposite happen? If your views are nicely correlated to your revenue and your orders, you can think about what you are doing at that point in time that's working well, so you know to do it again. Scrolling down below the explore uh, your data section, you will see traffic sources. These categories are exactly like the ones on the shop overview page, but with numbers for that specific listing instead of your entire shop. 
Next is search terms, which shows you what search terms this listing is being found for, which can be very helpful. You can look here to determine, is your SEO working? <laughs> are the keywords you are looking to rank for in there? If yes, that's great. Are you found for some keywords that you didn't expect or try to be found for? Great, then you can start using them more often. So essentially, this section gives you an idea of what search terms people are using to find your shop and your listing so you know which ones to use more in the future. Social media is exactly like a shop overview version, but for that specific listing and gives you an overview for that listing of where people came from if they came from social media. So that's pretty straightforward. And finally, you'll have favorites, which shows you how many people favorited this item over the time frame that you have selected. When you have a firm grip on what each shop stat category means, you are in such a better position to find the information you need and use it to get more traffic and sales. Now, if you want to see your Etsy shop stats and sales go up, <laughs> you will want to watch uh, this next video about 10 tips on how to make sales on Etsy. It should be showing on the screen and I'll also be linking to it below. So make sure to check it out. And until next time, au revoir. And also, you know, if you feel like subscribing, I'm not going to be mad at you for it. <laughs> you can hit that subscribe button just below. Thank you so much. And until next time, au revoir.